Easter weekend is less than a month away, and we are going to celebrate, and we want all of our Holly Church family to be celebrating Jesus' resurrection to life, and we want to invite everyone we can to celebrate with us. And I hope you've been praying for our Easter services. We have five services this year. The first will be an in-person service on Saturday, April 3rd at 5 p.m., followed by an online service at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, we'll have our in-person services at 9 and 10.30, and our online service will be at 10 a.m. Pray for those services, if you would. And I also hope you've been praying for those you want to invite to one of those services. And this is from a recent connection card. They wrote, I pray for everybody to follow Jesus Christ and to love him with all their hearts. And then they confessed, I have not been praying, but I will. And I hope if you haven't been praying for those you want to invite to an Easter service, you'll start today. And if you have been praying, thank you. Continue to do so. Easter weekend is a perfect time to invite your family and friends to one of our online or in-person worship services. Let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we ask for your spirit to be at work drawing people to you and give us the opportunities and the courage to invite people to get to know you. Bless our Easter services and guide our hearts and minds toward you as we worship and learn together today. In Jesus' name, amen. This month, we're journeying through Joshua, our book of the month for March in our By the Book series. And before we get to the first message in this series, though, I'd like to officially welcome you to Holly Church Online. Give me a wave and say hi to me and to each other in the chat or in the comments. And this is an awesome day. I'm so glad you're here. And make sure to like our services and share them on Facebook and YouTube and to like and follow Holly Church on Facebook. Facebook and to like and subscribe to Holly Church on YouTube if you haven't done so already. And if you shoot over to Holly Church online, you'll find message notes for today's message. You can also fill out your connection card there as well. One of the main reasons I ask you to complete a connection card each week is because there are next steps each week you can take for your personal spiritual health and your personal spiritual growth. And if you are on Facebook or YouTube, you can also follow the instructions on the screen to fill out your connection card. If this is your first time with us at Holly Church, I'm so glad you're here today. And we have a gift that we'd love to send you as our way of saying thanks for being here. It's a book co-written by me called Unshakable. And all you need to do to receive your free copy is to make sure to fill out your connection card so we can get your free gift sent out to you. In preparation as a church family, online and in person, we're fasting from something we enjoy, and when we miss that, we're praying. What are we praying for? We're praying for our Easter services. We're praying for those we want to invite to an Easter service. We're praying for Jesus to strengthen our faith and our reliance on Him. And our Easter fast is all about denying yourself from something you enjoy to focus your attention, your heart and your mind on Jesus' suffering for you as He heads toward the cross. And then... When our fast ends on Thursday, April 1st, allowing the joy of Jesus' resurrection from death to fill your life. And even if you haven't been fasting yet, it's okay. You can begin to do so today. The worship team is going to lead us in praising Jesus, and then I'll be back with today's message. Don't forget to fill out your connection card, even if you're watching this later in the week. Thanks. Praise the hallelujah, presence of my enemy. Praise the hallelujah, louder than the unbelief. Praise the hallelujah, weapon is a melody. Hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm 
By the book message series, we're spending one month in an individual book from the Bible. The word Bible actually means books because the Bible is not a book. It's a compilation of 66 different books or letters compiled together. And according to the Apostle Paul, your life, if you're a Christian, your life is another book or another letter in addition to to this Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, you are a letter of Christ written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. So if you're a Christian, you should really think of yourself as being the 67th book of the Bible. And for better or for worse, you're representing Jesus wherever you're steps take you. You are a living, breathing letter of Christ. And this By the Book series is about you getting to know God better so you can represent Him better. It's also about you experiencing the presence of God in your own life so that your life represents Him better. It's also more than that, though, because the Bible tells us that being a Christian It's not really for wimps or cowards. Being a Christian is about being counter to the lies and deceptions that are constantly bombarding us. We're told to have clear minds, that is, to be sober and not controlled by anything other than Christ's Spirit because 
2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6, the Apostle Paul tells us, we live in this world, but we don't act like it's people. See, you don't want to act. You don't want to think like the people who don't know Jesus because they're all headed toward destruction. And so this series is also about giving you the tools to be able to answer people who may be headed on that path of destruction, but God tugs at their heart, and they have these questions about God. Is faith in God irrational? Well, no, it's not. That's what our Genesis series was all about. And those messages are available anytime for you to go back and for you to review. Where is God? Is He close? Is He distant? Is He nowhere? Well, our Exodus series answers that question. You see, through evil and wicked people, Satan and other evil spiritual beings are always attacking your mind and your beliefs and trying to capture your thoughts and your kids' thoughts and your grandkids' thoughts. So I want to give you tools to be able to answer those tough questions about God so you will not be deceived. Paul says, we live in this world, but we don't act like its people or fight our battles with the weapons of this world. Instead, we use God's power that can destroy fortresses. We destroy arguments and every bit of pride that keeps anyone from knowing God. We capture people's thoughts and make them obey Christ. We're warriors for Jesus. We're fighting this spiritual battle that takes place in the physical realm. And we don't fight it with weapons of this world. How we fight it is with alert minds and prayerful hearts. And if you're a Christian, all of this ties, this being a warrior for Jesus, it all ties into our book of the month for this month, Joshua, because Joshua is a warrior. However, he wasn't always a warrior. He was actually born a slave, and his skin looked a lot like mine. And I only mention this to help correct any notion that slavery is an experience of only one group of people in one particular country, because it's not. And what's currently being taught, I believe, is just trying to divide people. And I'm trying to capture every thought for Christ to bring unity. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29, all of you. So, Paul here, he's writing to Christian, he's writing to the church. He says, all of you are God's children because of your faith in Christ Jesus. And when you were baptized, if you want to be baptized into Jesus, we've got a baptism weekend coming up, Easter weekend. Just mark that next step on your connection card at Holly Church Online. We'll be in touch with you. And when you were baptized, it was as though you had put on Christ in the same way you put on new clothes. Faith in Christ Jesus is what makes each of you equal with each other. What makes you equal? Skin color, money, abilities, power, position, getting government handouts, so many parts in a movie. All of that is absolute frivolous garbage. It's lies. Because it is faith in Christ Jesus that makes each of you equal. And without Jesus, you'll be equally destroyed no matter how much money you have, no matter what your position is or what your skin color is. Paul says, whether you are a Jew or a Greek, a a slave, a slave or a free person, a man or a woman... So if you belong to Christ, you are now part of Abraham's family, and you will be given what God has promised. What has God promised? He's promised a land that is full of everything beyond what you can even imagine, a land that's there for you and your family and for everyone that's in Christ Jesus. That's the promise of eternal life. Don't trade that promised land for the few years you have here living with no thoughts of Jesus. As I said, Joshua is born a slave, so how does he end up a warrior? 
Well, we left off last week with Yahweh, or Lord in all capital letters, completely defeating the gods of Egypt. And when this happens, Pharaoh finally releases the Hebrew people from captivity. Joshua was one of those people released from captivity, released from slavery. And they travel out of Egypt into an area the Bible calls the wilderness. Generally, when the Bible calls an area the wilderness, it's an area where people graze their sheep, their cattle, but there's no homes. It's not a settled area. There's lots of wild animals out there still. But there's also, even though there's no homes there, there's also nomadic tribes of people that live in these wilderness areas. They just travel around in tents from place to place to place. One such group of people were the Amalekites. And the Amalekites moved over quite a large area of land. But Israel, after leaving Egypt, happens to travel into an area where the Amalekites are. And this is what happens. This is where we first meet Joshua. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. When the Israelites were at Rephidim, now this is a town. It's, it's, I mean, this is not a town. It's a location where water is. They were attacked by the Amalekites. Moses said to Joshua, select some men for us and go fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the hilltop with God's staff in my hand. Joshua did as Moses had told him and fought against Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, and while Moses hold up, up his hands, Israel prevailed. But whenever he put his hands down, Amalek prevailed. And when Moses' hands grew heavy, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that, when it, so that his hands remained steady until the sun went down. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. Now we see right here at the beginning that Joshua's success as a warrior is entirely contingent upon God. Now Moses held up the staff, but it was God who gave Joshua the victory. And it's no different for us. God's the one who's going to give us victory. As a Christian, you you can't have arrogance You are totally dependent upon God to give you the victory. But you are not a passive participant. Joshua wasn't passive. He was in the battle. You actively participate in the battle. You know, you pray, Lord, I really want this person to come to church with me on Easter. Soften their heart. That is absolutely essential. And it indicates your reliance on God. But then you have to participate. You have to actually invite them, like Joshua is actually engaging in the battle. And the next step on your connection card this week is to pray for those you want to invite to an Easter service. Now, after this battle with the Amalekites, Joshua becomes Moses' right-hand man, assistant, future leader of Israel. In training, And eventually, Joshua assumes leadership of the people of Israel upon Moses' death. And that assumption of the mantle of leadership by Joshua leads us directly into our book of the month, the book of Joshua. Another next step I would encourage you to take, if you haven't already marked this on your connection card, is to read Joshua. And again, your connection card is found at Holly Church Online. And as with each book of the month, this first message is about helping you as you read the book of Joshua to get the most out of it. So today I'm going to give you a good, easily understood overview of Joshua, who wrote it, why God inspired its writing. And I'm doing this to help you as you read it to better understand what God is saying to you and what he's saying about the world that you live in. Then over the next couple of weeks, we'll look at a question, a tough question that many ask about God that we find in the book of Joshua. Joshua is actually one of my favorite books of the Bible, and Joshua is one of my favorite examples of faith from the Bible. And I hope you're just feeling my passion 
for what he teaches us as I'm teaching you today. Quick recap to set up the scene as you begin to read Joshua. God delivers the descendants of Israel from slavery in Egypt, and then he gives them his guidelines for having a relationship with him. We often call them the Ten Commandments, which tell us how we relate to God and how we relate to each other. They show us God desires to have a relationship with us and what that means when we do, how we live and interact with the Lord and with each other. The Israelites, they come to the edge of entering into the land promised to them, but then they sin big time. Their sin, they fail to trust the Lord to bring them safely into the land of Canaan, the land that's been promised to be given to them. As punishment for their unbelief, all the Israelites that are 20 years old and over must die in the wilderness as they travel through it for 40 years. Joshua and another man by the name of Caleb, another favorite of mine from the Bible, are the only ones who will survive this 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. So at the end of this 40 years, Moses passes away, and now Joshua has been chosen to lead God's people into the land of Canaan. And this is a fulfillment of the promise God made to Abraham that Abraham's descendants would settle the land and it would become theirs. Most of the book of Joshua is written by Joshua himself. Now, obviously, others may have edited the book and someone did add portions to it because the end of the book is written after Joshua's death. And it was important for this book to be written because it shows us God's faithfulness to his people when we are faithful to him. So it shows us also the importance of our obedience to him. It also demonstrates the end result of those who reject him as their savior and the consequences for us if we disobey the Lord ourselves. You can access message notes at Holly Church Online where you can follow along and fill in the blanks here. The main characters in the book of Joshua are God, Yahweh. Yahweh is the creator of all we can see and cannot see, and he chooses a people to represent him here on earth. And when the events in Joshua take place, God has already defeated the little g-gods of Egypt, and now he, with the freed descendants of Israel, he has formed a new people And as they enter the land of Canaan, Yahweh is declaring war on the gods of the Canaanites. This is a spiritual war that takes place in the physical world. And the ultimate commander is the Lord himself. While others serve lesser things and lesser gods, those who follow Yahweh, Jesus, serve him and him alone, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Another main character in Joshua is Joshua himself. Joshua, whose birth name was Hoshea, serves as Moses' assistant from his youth. Numbers 13, 16. Moses changed the name of Hoshea, son of Nun, to Joshua. Numbers eleven twenty eight. Joshua, the son of Nun, who had been Moses' assistant excuse me, since his birth. There are multiple times after leaving Egypt that the Hebrew people rebel against their God. They rebel against Moses' leadership. But Joshua is never involved in any of that rebellion against God or any rebellion against Moses. He's a faithful follower of Yahweh God, the God of Israel. Another main character we see in the book of Joshua is Jesus himself, or Joshua. Joshua's name in Hebrew is actually pronounced Yahshua, and the name means God saves. It's the very same name of our Savior when you're pronouncing it in the Hebrew language. Jesus is a pronunciation in the Greek and the English, but if we were pronouncing it in in Hebrew, it would be Yahshua, God saves. Now, 
Why is this so important? Well, Jesus is represented all throughout the book of Joshua by Joshua. It gives you a broader picture of what it means for Jesus to be our Savior and our judge, the judge of all the earth. Rahab, another major character in Joshua, she's a Canaanite prostitute who shows us that God's salvation is open to all who repent, believe, and obey Him. Caleb, as I mentioned earlier, he's another hero of mine. He's an amazing warrior for Yahweh. He's a man who is completely faithful to his God, just like Joshua. Achan. Achan, on the other hand, disobeys God. He does it for wealth, which has grave consequences for him and the rest of the people of Israel. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money, and that's what Achan had, the love of money causes all kinds of trouble. Some people want money so much that they have given up their faith and caused themselves a lot of pain. The key themes of Joshua are God's covenant faithfulness. When God promises you something, He delivers on that promise. It does not depend on our strength or on our ability. God's judgment. Jesus, Yahshua, Joshua, will judge and destroy those who disobey Him and reject Him as their God and Savior. Another key theme of Joshua is our obedience matters. The result of our disobedience to God brings about disaster, not only upon ourselves, but often on those around us. Whereas obedience results in blessings, disobedience results in curses and bad stuff. Biblical faith, key theme in Joshua. Biblical faith is acting on what you believe. Biblical faith is not just saying, well, I believe in Jesus. Biblical faith is living what you say you believe. As I said earlier, Joshua is one of my favorite books of the Bible, and it does bring up a question that a lot of people have about God that we find in the book of Joshua. Is God cruel? And we'll tackle that question over the next couple of messages. As of today, you now have an overview of the book of Joshua to help you as you read it this month. Just want to remind you, you can find message notes at Holly Church Online to review what you've learned about Joshua. So as you're reading it, it will help you better understand the book. I do want to, for a moment, take us back to that last key theme of Joshua. Biblical faith is acting on what you believe. It's not just saying, I believe in Jesus. It's living what you say you believe. And you are faced with this every day of your life. Are you going to live out your faith in Jesus? I like to give you easy, practical ways to start living out your faith. And so one of those ways on your connection card is you can sign up to be a part of my prayer team for Easter weekend. You can do this to live out your faith. And if you're a part of my prayer team, it's a three-week commitment to pray a prayer for our Easter services each day of the week. And I will send you the first prayer beginning the week of March 14th and then new prayers the following two weeks, March 21st and 28th. Also, as a church family, so here's another way to live out your faith, we will be praying over our Easter... Easter weekend services in the 24 hours leading up to them. Now, this isn't you praying for 24 hours straight. We split the time up into 30-minute increments. If enough people sign up, we can reduce it to 15-minute increments. And you choose the time or the times. If you want to pray more than once, that's fine by us. Just let us know. And you choose the time or times that work best for you. And then before that prayer time begins, we'll send you a prayer guide that will help you as you pray over our Easter services in your part of that 24 hours of prayer. I hope you're noticing that we have a prayer and fasting focus this year as we head toward Easter weekend. It's because I want to help you 
align your hearts and your minds to the celebration of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And it's important that we continue to fast and pray leading up to our Easter celebration, praying the Lord's Prayer each day of our fast, praying for our Easter services, and praying for those we want to invite to an Easter service, whether it's in person or online. And as I mentioned in the message, Easter weekend is also a baptism Sunday. So if you're ready to be baptized into Jesus, just make sure and let us know that, and we'll get in touch with you. Now, after we pray together, please, you know, don't log off. There's one final song I really want you to not only hear, but to just experience. First, we'll pray, and then the song. You can worship through giving anytime at hollychurch.org. Just click on the Give tab. All of our giving options are on the screen, and thanks for supporting your church. We're going to pray together our fasting prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer because this is how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we have forgiven the wrongs that others have done to us. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord keep you and bless you and protect those of you who are His. Enjoy the worship here. Experience it. Let it just permeate your soul, your heart, and your mind, and let it strengthen you.